the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the first day of Holy Week, where we gather before our King, Jesus. The one who is King of Kings, but yet humbled himself to take the form of a servant. Jesus did not come to be served, but rather to serve us by giving up his life as a ransom for many. So that Jesus humbly took the form of a servant to be obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Jesus humbly enters into Jerusalem as the king, the king of kings, the king of Israel, on a donkey. So that in this we see the example of humility, that we too, as partakers of the kingdom, are to be humble in our own lives and humbly serve one another. So we are learning to serve one another in our daily lives and the vocations and the places where God has placed us to be of benefit to one another. But yet, when we gather here, we come back humbly as the people of God. And we realize and we recognize we have not served our neighbor as we should. We don't have that servant's heart like we should. So we gather together and we confess that we have sinned. We have failed. We have failed to serve our neighbor as we should. We've failed to be humble in the midst of others that we've come in contact with throughout the week. And so we gather and we recognize and we realize we cannot help ourselves out of this sinful condition. We are like those who have gone down into a waterless pit and can't come out. And without water, there is no life. So we gather before the king humbly. We don't have excuses. We don't have words to say, well, um, I, I, I didn't do it here, but that, it's because, and it's because of this, and it's because of that. We have no words to say except, I've sinned. No excuses. No reasons why we failed to serve one another. So we stand before our king silent, humble, without a word to say why we didn't do what we were supposed to do. But it's in this place of God's promised presence where he's the one who speaks to us. He's the one who gives us words to say. And so the Holy Spirit teaches us through Psalm 118 that the words to say is Hoshiana. Or as you may say, Hosanna or Hosanna. Praying out and saying, save us now, save us, please, save us, we beseech you. Those are the words of God's people, humbly coming before the king. And so the Lord is the one who speaks humbly to us. He's the one who speaks peace, humbly, to the voice of your pastor standing here proclaiming to you the voice of Jesus that it is finished and it is done and he is one for you. Salvation. He is your savior. Humbly he comes to you as your king in his body and blood in a humble way of bread and wine. And with these gifts that he gives us as our king then it gives to us reason to sing. And so this is why the Holy Spirit gives us these these words to say that we would rejoice greatly, that we should shout aloud that Jesus is king. Righteous is he and bringing salvation. So Jesus is the one who has come to save us. Jesus is the one who has come to work for us. In fact, as Holy Week begins here on Palm Sunday, I want you to see this week as a work week for Jesus. It begins now. So that he will work himself to death 
to save us from our sins. So that throughout this holy week, this is when he gets to work to do what only he can do. So immediately on Monday of Holy Week, what he'll do is he will curse, curse the fig tree. Going all the way back to the garden in which Adam and Eve tried to make (laughs) clothes out of fig leaves to hide their guilt. He curses the tree that no more will that fig tree bring sorrow and sadness and humanity try to save themselves from their own sin. And then throughout the week when he's working, he teaches. He teaches constantly. He speaks constantly the words of life. Constantly speaking and teaching in parables in particular. And then it's on Thursday when Jesus is betrayed by one of the twelve. And it's on Thursday where Jesus also puts to work the institution of his supper, the last supper, the Lord's supper the New Testament in his blood. His body would be given for us for our lives. His blood shed for us, poured out for us for the forgiveness of our sins. And then it is on Good Friday where Jesus makes all good by hanging upon a tree passively. So that Jesus' work ends on Good Friday when he has the words to say and he speaks, it is finished. This is the work week of Jesus, that he works to death to save us from ourselves, from sin, and from Satan. And then, of course, on Holy Saturday, this is where Jesus rests from his work. This is the week that is ahead of us. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. So the Holy Spirit teaches us to rejoice greatly and to shout aloud and to sing because our King is victorious. He's the one who is righteous. He's the one who brings salvation. But yet when he came into Jerusalem... The way of the world is to have the words of the world, not the words from above. And so when Jesus comes as the king, immediately we see the words of the world in this war of words. So Pilate will say, like all of those of the world, are you the king of the Jews? Well, the Holy Spirit gives us the word. This is the king. This is the one that we should sing about. Behold him, see him. Well, Pilate sees a man, Jesus of Nazareth, a man who's humble, a man who speaks not much. And then it's the people, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the Herodians, the scribes, the priests, Levites, the high priests. They all work the crowd up in a loud voice greatly rejoicing in the death of Jesus, shouting aloud, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. We don't want this king. Send us another. That that's the rejoicing of the world is to try to cancel Jesus. But Jesus comes humbly. Jesus comes in the form of a servant to be obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. And so Jesus is mocked, he's made fun of. Jesus comes to save humanity by being handed over to humanity and the mob that's going crazy to want to cancel him. And so what do the soldiers do? They put that purple cloak upon him. They put the crown of thorns on his head. And then they salute him, but they strike him, they spit upon him, and then they strip him of the cloak and put him on the tree. That's humanity. That's the rebellion against the king. And the punishment for treason is death. And so even when Jesus hangs on the tree, on the cross, those who are gathered his foot, those who should be rejoicing with the voice of God from Zechariah chapter 9, rejoicing greatly 
shouting aloud, saying, Behold, our king, righteous and salvation has he. But instead, they continue to mock him on the tree. That's the words of the world. They look at Jesus and say, You know, we see you there. If you come down off the tree, then we will see, and then we will believe that you are the king of Israel. This is all in the realm of the devil, always tempting us to doubt God's word, always tempting us to go along with the mob of the world, the so-called wisdom of the world, and to hate God, and to try to cancel the king. The world has hated the Creator since the fall into sin. And all of this comes to a climax at the crucifixion. But the King, our King, is one who knows that the penalty for treason is death, but our King humbly takes upon the punishment himself. And he dies in our stead. Even though when he's hanging on the tree, they say, oh yeah, well, if you are the Savior, if you are the one who comes to bring salvation, (laughs) why is it that you saved others, huh? But you can't save yourself. That's the mockery. That's the making fun of Jesus who died for us. But instead of following the mob and the madness of the world, we look to the Scripture where God gives us the word. So we all stand silent before the cross, and we see and we behold our crucified king. This is Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. He is the king of Israel. And this is what he has come to do, to work for me and to work for you. So we stand here at the base of the cross this day, not listening to the sound of the world, but instead rejoicing in the voice of Jesus. But this is the one we've been waiting for. He alone is the king that we behold and we see. He's a crucified king so that he may be the king of our conscience and assure us that he has satisfied all the demands of the law all of the shortcomings that we have, all of the weakness in our own service towards others. That Jesus comes to serve us and give his life for a ransom. And he gives us these words again to say, Hoshiana, Hosanna, or Hosanna. Save us now. Save us, please. Save us, we beseech you. Have mercy upon us. Jesus, son of David, king of Israel, have mercy. And so as his people, we continue to humbly learn to believe this to be true. Jesus is the king who has come to bring salvation. Amen. The peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, guard and keep your hearts. In Christ Jesus. Amen. We rise for prayer.